what's going on, man? Not much. What's up with you? Oh, you know, just living that life. Yeah, is that so? Is that so? Living that life, enjoying life cereal every day. Every day? Not every day, but some days. Some days I like to pour myself a nice heaping bowl of life cereal. As I say, don't, not every day. Good for you. (laughs) Remember when we used to do sketches and you'd be like, let's let's eat first. And I'd be like, I just had a big bowl of cereal. (laughs) You'd be like, why did you eat a big bowl of cereal if you knew we were going to hang out? (laughs) I don't know, man. I've been eating cereal since I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? You're a cereal guy, huh? I'm a bit of a cereal guy. You not think me. S- I know. Not that I don't live that life. <clears throat> what do you enjoy for breakfast? What do you? What does Tim like to eat for breakfast? What's his go-to? Uh, lately it's just been like yogurt with some granola, kind of my breakfast. Keep it simple. Breakfast That's good choice. Yeah. 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 Uh, I enjoy a little bit of oatmeal here and there as well. A little bit of. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, what you do is the key is you put in a, a dollop of peanut butter in the oatmeal and a little bit of milk, a splash of milk, Tim. Not too much milk. Oh, cause exactly. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you put in too much milk, then it gets all watery and gross. You want a splash of milk. You know, you want a, a nice consistency, but nothing too nothing too viscous. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I guess I get what you mean. And uh, enjoy that with some coffee sometimes. I haven't done that in a while. I'm unemployed again. My temporary job was temporary, and it's over, so uh, I am seeking new employment. <laughs> I actually had a, couple okay, of, okay. had a couple of interviews today. By the way, your face is looking really thin. Have you lost some weight? I'm being, I'm being serious, by the way. Yes, I have. Yeah, looking good. Looking good, man. That beard is uh, it's kind of pointing down. It's, making your, it's thinning out your face, you know what I mean, when it goes yeah, kind of like... Yeah, I mean, that's probably part of yeah. it, too. There you go. There you go. But, yeah... Lost, lost a good amount of weight in the past couple months, so I keep on trucking with that. <laughs> I ha- actually, you know, I've not been drinking as much. I think I've had a beer in the la- one beer in the last two weeks or so. Um, yeah, I think I cut back too. It sucks because I love beer. Still, it's not because I don't like it. Believe me, it's because right. you cut back on 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 something that's got so rich in carbs. You know, you're likely to lose. You know, a little bit of. That's carbs you're not consuming is what I'm getting at. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now so, I mean, people talk about carbs all the time, and I don't. it's not about carbs. It's about calories, like realistically. Like I get that carbs can be worse for you, but people like talk about carbs. Oh, did you quit all carbs? People are asking me because I've lost weight. And I'm like, no, not at all. I haven't stopped eating carbs. Just eat less. Calories <laughs> is what matters. It doesn't matter what they're coming from. Just eat less calories. Like, yeah. You know, that's. You know, but yeah, I get what you mean. It's calories. Beer is a lot of empty calories, and unfortunately, that's just how it goes. Been drinking some lighter beers here and there, you know, so maybe that's a little bit better. Um, but even still, like, yeah, I, I haven't been drinking as much, you know, yeah. so that has affected it as well. Been working out, getting back into it, which is nice. It's reminding me that I used to always love, like, being active and playing sports and stuff, so just kind of got in the rut of not doing it because you know that's how it is yeah but yeah i'm like instantly kind of want to beat up nerds more again uh <laughs> that that kind of the jock side of me comes back out as i start to work out and i was talking to my friend quentin who i've been on a bunch of podcasts with in the past so people who know quentin will know uh what i'm talking about yeah but i know he Quint. agreed with Quint me. moody right he's like same thing he's like yeah uh, you know being a, a jock it comes out a lot more as you uh as you work out well, work out more and more. That, I, that kind of jock tendencies come back out. I think your testosterone levels rise a little bit when you're when you're working out. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's part of it. But like you know, testosterone rise. But like you know, if you have that memory, it goes back to like what you were like when you had the higher <laughs> testosterone level. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this: Is it is it harder because you're in a big city? You know, you're in LA, mm-hmm. much bigger than Denver. Is it harder to? Uh, create a schedule where you give yourself time to work out because you're in such a big city and everything's so cramped together and there's like no it's easy for me because there's a gym in my work oh perfect you know? yeah so that, works. that makes it very easy I j- i've just been going early to get some like cardio right when i wake up drive to work early work out for about 40 minutes usually uh lately i've been doing about 30 minutes just on a bike basically and 
uh, been doing about 10 minutes of just doing the, the weight machines and maybe some some uh, squats or some uh, curls or not curls, but the fuck do they call them? Uh, crunches. Clenches? Stuff like that. Crunches. Crunches. Like oh, OK. Gotcha. Um, and then on my lunch before I eat, I'll do another like 20 minutes, usually either a mix of like 15 more minutes on the bike and then some more machines are just straight 20 minutes of the bike depending on how I'm feeling and everything. Oh, that's good. So just kind of mixing it up. What's up? Yeah. Well, that's good. You got a little routine going. That's great. But focusing primarily on cardio because that's how you lose the most weight, right? But yeah. I really was only doing cardio for the longest, and then I was having a lot of trouble raising my heart rate um, to the level like where I was actually getting like anaerobic, where I assumed I'd be burning fat. So I was like kind of concerned with that. So I started mixing in some free weights while I was doing the cardio to help get my heart rate more. That started working. Then I started getting concerned that like uh, I'll have flabby, loose skin as I lose more weight. So I figured to fill it in by building up some muscle would probably be a good idea. So that's why I've been focusing a little bit more on that, too, just to basically, yeah, for that. So that my skin doesn't end up looking all loose. It'll fill in with muscle while I burn fat Yeah, is the idea. That's good. I mean, it's pretty simple and straightforward, you know? Some people think, oh, you have to, like do an hour on the treadmill and lift all these weights. And it's like, no, it's it's what you eat and combined with a little bit of working out and you'll lose weight quickly. Now, are you tracking your calories and stuff or what are you doing? No, just eating less. That's just it. eating Not less? Not really tracking anything. You don't have, pretty... yeah. What's up? You don't have like a Fitbit or anything like that? No, my phone, I guess, has some fucking health program on it that does weird stuff. It tells me that <laughs> I, I walked enough that day, but it's like, I take my phone off while I'm doing my exercise. So it's just counting like what I do extra throughout the day. So it's nice to have that because it does make me a little bit more cognizant of what I'm doing. So I have been like going out of my way to, to do a little bit more like outside of just the working out, like a little bit extra longer dog walks and stuff like that, taking the stairs more often and things. It's just like the stupid gamification, but it's just like having it tracked makes you think about it, you know? Yeah, definitely. Well, if you ever do want to get a fit, this is should... not what people care about on this podcast. I know, I know. <laughs> this is a cold open. Anyways, welcome to the show. This is Todd Beer. I'm your host, Adrian Delatore. With me, as always, is Timothy Robert Buckner. Tim, how you doing tonight? <laughs> Fantastic. I've been doing good. We're talking about not drinking beer. I can't wait any longer. I gotta start drinking beer. Please do. You know, I was. Uh, we went to a baseball game a couple weeks ago, and uh, ooh, analog. So I'm gonna go at it with this big boy. What is that? What kind of beer is that? been saving this for a while riesling amphora saison so this is uh this was a special release from modern times now that we have a modern times here in downtown la i'm able to get their uh monthly special releases and then i can pick them up nice um locally which is nice because it used to be if i wanted to get something from their special release it would be like oh what are you gonna do i'm gonna drive all the way to san diego <laughs> so now that it's really easy it's nice this is say uh, uh I think it's a, a French Saison. It's got Pilsner um, and unmalted wheat hops. It's got aged Herzbuck and New Zealand Cascade. Yeast, Saccharomyces, Brettanomyces, and Lactobacillus. They brewed this Saison. Super, it's a uh, delicate, surprisingly delicate Saison. Um, and then what they did was they uh, added in fresh-pressed Riesling grape juice, which makes Riesling wine. I don't I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a it's a white wine, and then they aged it in um, the clay amphores, which are like I don't know if you know what those are, but it's like instead of in some places instead of aging wine in barrels, they they age them in these clay pots that allow more minerality to soak into the wine and give it like a, a rounder mouth feel. So this is kind of a hybrid wine beer situation. I believe it was also a uh, collaboration with someone else, but it doesn't say on here. Modern times can be kind of bad about that where they 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 don't list who they collaborated with you have to like look stuff up to see it also might not be a collaboration it might be just them but uh yeah i've been meaning to drink this had it for a little bit i like that it's a uh wine beer hybrid i've been into those lately i don't know if you've been trying anything like that no lately but it, they're popping up more and more places are doing mixes of that you can really see the like nice champagne bubbles thin body uh yeah no head really this is an interesting one. So, so yeah, that's why I was saving this one special just in general. And then I figured, hey, it's been a while since we recorded. Might as well pop her open tonight, right? Might as I well. I can't share it with you, but I can kind of share it with you on the podcast. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
That sounds delicious, by the way. Uh, Saison sounds really refreshing right now. It's uh, been cooling down here in Colorado. I don't know how it is out there where you are, but uh, I, I still get hot easily. I still, you know, sweat like a pig. Uh, so Saison sounds really refreshing. How is it? Yeah, it's not as hot as it was, but it's still pretty warm. Um, yeah, well, I was going to say, I went to a baseball game a couple weeks ago, and uh, we got free tickets okay. to get to get a beer or whatever, and uh, they had, you know, just the usual stuff, but the only thing non, the only thing non, uh, mainstream or whatever they had was, uh, was New Belgium, was, uh, there, or not New Belgium, sorry, um, god damn it, what's that, what's the, uh, Blue Moon, Blue Moon, they had Blue Moon, and, uh, oh, jeez, I know, but you know what, uh, we had a, I, I got a course later on, for my wife, because I thought maybe she would want that, and, I was like, I would have preferred a blue moon. <laughs> so I forgot. I forgot yeah. what good blue moon is. And uh, we went to Costco the other day and bought like a, a big pack of of, of, uh, of a blue moon beer. It's like blue moon, and they have like some kind of uh, they have like two different other flavors or like fruit flavors, or whatever. They're pretty good, but um, yeah, just good old fashioned blue moon does the trick every time. I think if you're if you're kind of in a bind, if you have nothing, if you have no other choice. But anyway, enough about that. How's, yeah. how, how's that one? That one that one's got, sounds pretty good. This is nice. The minerality is definitely there. You get that kind of rounder electrolyte kind of feel, you know, when you drink like a Gatorade or something that you know has like the those minerals and stuff in there. Kind of get that mouth feel, really round, really full, but then crisp, biting. So it's like it's nice where it's it's not heavy in the roast. It's really light backbone, but it has a full mouth feel it's really really good balance sounds like a good balance um sounds delicious um all right well i can go bust out one of my beers really quick if you want or we can go on a break what do you think yeah yeah this is one of the ones i was talking about this is the this is by blue moon this is their pacific apricot wheat okay um i think i've had this one i think i have let's try it again is owned by like coors now isn't it though is it? Let's see. I think so. Blue Moon Brewing, based out of Golden, Colorado. Let's see. They probably are. I don't see any indication on the bottle that they are, but you may be right. They probably are. Yeah. It's not the best. Blue Moon, I mean, like I said, like for me, it's it's a beer that if if there's if everything else is cores or Bud Light, I would settle for a Blue Moon, you know. Uh, and it comes to fruit right. flavors, I, I like when be, when when breweries do that, but it really depends on how they balance it. So let's, let's see how let's see how this one is. That's good. That's actually balanced really well. The apricot flavor, you know, comes through. Uh, it's it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, makes sense with like a wheat beer <clears throat> having like a, having like fruit, fruit flavors and stuff. The only thing is, honestly, you have to drink this really cold because once it starts to get warm, I feel like the apricot flavor kind of tastes yeah, kind yeah. Of w- gross. I don't know if that's maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just weird, but um, uh, you have to really think this like really cold, so drink it really fast. But anyways, besides all that, as we were saying earlier, it has been a while. Is there anything else new exciting in your life that you wanted to talk about tonight? Uh, hmm. No, I don't know. I mean, not much, man. Honestly, it's fucking weird. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Kind of boring. Kind of boring. You know. Yeah. Uh, went to the D- to a DSA meetup just uh, yesterday. What's that? Democratic Socialists of America. Oh, really? You know, like doing more of like just a meeting, meeting. It was just like a hangout kind of thing, though. It wasn't like party, right? Uh, like business, really. Well, I'm curious but, uh, what, what what went down. What did you do there? I uh, just kind of hung out and talked to a couple people, and then they were like talking about initiatives that they're working on and stuff. Um, it was funny because it was supposed to be, you know, like not business, but that's kind of seemed to be the a major part of it. Um, because yeah, all those people are interested in that stuff, so that's what they're going to want to talk about, even when they're supposed to be just hanging out, you know? Right. <laughs> um, let's talk to someone about like homeless, um, kind of the homeless epidemic, and like helping people with squatters' rights and letting them know 
like what rights they have and even there's like a program where the people film when they do the sweeps of the homeless camps to uh to kind of like just document what's going on to make sure that they're not doing anything that the cops aren't doing anything illegal or or just being overly aggressive towards them so mm-hmm. let's tell them like you know there's a camp that's been right in front of our apartment for a long time it's got sweeped a few times so we you know we'd be interested in kind of giving them some kind of information so that they can know their rights and be protected and stuff like that so look into that and then it looked like another guy was talking about that there or another person i guess i should say was talking about that they're looking for uh, um people who are members of unions to be part of a labor caucus um within the dsa to talk about so i was like oh you know i'm in the union so i'd like to join up with that and be a part of the uh labor caucus for that so uh, probably look into being involved in that at least because they said that they were having issues with having enough people who were in unions to sit on the on the board to talk about like kind of getting DSA politics involved in the unions more directly. So I was like, oh, I'd be very interested in doing that. I'd like to help like push my union to be get involved with DSA actions. You know, right? Um, you know, it's funny. I I was I know LA has a huge homeless problem, you know, a lot of big cities do and you know Denver's no exception. I mean it's a housing crisis in general. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah. So it's it, yeah, it's not just the homeless but also like finding housing and, and then affordable housing and stuff like that, yeah. Well, that's the thing like so here in Denver and downtown there's an area called Rhino which stands for River North, you know, it's like a, a cool hipster, I don't know, gentrified name that they gave it, right? But be- mm-hmm. before it was gentrified, it was a pretty shitty part of town. What about gyno for the fellows? <laughs> it's gyno. Um, <laughs> it was a pretty shitty part of town before they gentrified it, from what I've read. But since it's become more developed, and you know they've put in ap- new apartments and homes and things like that, the the more affluent people that live there are complaining about the amount of homeless people that are around there. But it's like you have to understand, like these homeless people have always been here. You're just now noticing it, but. They've always been here because this used to be a crappy part of town. And on top of right. that, you have like five homeless shelters right around the corner from where this is. And, you know, what do you expect is going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, don't judge the homeless people for being homeless. You know, that's just that's just a part of life, unfortunately, you know, and it, it really sucks. Um, but that's that's just the truth. You know, that's just the way it is, you know. Uh, I know some places yeah, like... And, inst- I, and the sweeps, like... I'm saying out here, like, they do the sweeps, and they try to, they tell people to move, and they grab all their stuff and all this, and it's like, where are they supposed to move to? Right. That doesn't fix the problem in any way. Having the cops come and bust up the homeless camp and tell them that they have to move doesn't then magically make them have a place to live. Yeah, they're just going to move somewhere else. They're going to set up camp somewhere else, you know? That's... Yeah, you're not fixing any problem with that. No. I mean, not to get too much into it, but I, I know Salt Lake City a few years ago they basically not solve the homeless problem, but they try to rectify the situation by giving homeless people homes. <laughs> and oh, believe it or not, idea. it helped a lot. I mean, I know that can't, shocking. <laughs> that no way. <laughs> um, that probably can't be done everywhere or, or, or for everyone, but it's, it's a step in the right direction. I think, you know, um, you can at least try, right? Like you can at least try to do something that's positive. Yeah. But that's interesting that you uh, that you're part of that. That sounds uh, I don't know. Um, I was I had this this discussion with somebody on Facebook the other day about socialism, and she was saying, "Well, socialism didn't work in Venezuela." I'm like, "Yeah, Venezuela is a shit country because of a shit government that's corrupt as hell," and a lot of that has to do with right. U.S. interference in Latin America, which has been going on since like the '60s and '70s. I mean, we've gone down we there was a guy i saw an interview once where he basically said like yeah my job is to basically go into latin america or go into poor countries and basically say hey you know we'll we'll um we'll buy all your resources and stuff like oil and whatnot but you're gonna have to like you know do what we say like you're gonna have to like kind of uh uh toe the line of 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 you know being against certain things like like socialism you know uh, which is like a huge, which right. is such a dirty word in American politics right now. I think it's, I think it's terrible because when people think of socialism, it's like their first thought is, uh, their first thought is what, like communism, like oh Russia and Cuba and how those countries failed. I don't think it's that bad anymore, but it was. It seems that way. it seems like there's more of a resurgence now, but but for a while there, it seemed yeah. like socialism was a dirty word. Like you can't say socialism in American politics because 
You just can't because the idea of having that in the U.S. just wouldn't work. I, I, yeah, I mean, I considered myself a socialist from a very, from very early on. So I don't know. I think like our generation, it was more acceptable from the beginning. But I do think that there was a time not that long ago when it was a bigger deal. Right. You know, I remember I had a chemistry teacher that like would get in arguments with me about like my promotion of being like so, considering myself a socialist in high school. Um, you know, she was from like Romania or something and made a big deal about how terrible it was. I'm just like, that's anecdotal evidence. It's like, you can point out places where democracy doesn't work. Like, um, was it Italy with the really scuzzy, uh, uh, prime minister who like has all the fucking, um, like the women and the parties where they like fuck all these young women and all this stuff it's like that's a democracy is that good <laughs> that he's taking government money and using it for those things and does that make all democracies bad just because that one person is exploiting democracy that way it's the same thing with socialism it's like to say oh well because in russia it didn't work or like to, even the people who try to point out that like how venezuela it, it, the issue in venezuela is socialism when it's like that's not the issue in venezuela is not socialism the issue in Venezuela is that OPEC countries are trying to fuck them because they don't like that they're taking advantage of what resources they have to, for the betterment of the society instead of just being going, you know, lockstep with the OPEC. So it's like these concepts where they're like, oh, social, socialism is so terrible. Like, is anyone fucking complaining in Switzerland? Like, people love those Nordic countries where everything is great and they're super socialist. Right. Yeah. You know? And, and let me ask you this, and I don't know if you know, but I'm curious. Can you scale socialism to the size of a country like the U.S.? Because Switzerland is not a big country. Now, that's the other argument people would make, you know? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> yes, but the, the, the thing is, like, socialism is really, like, a, a nebulous concept. So it's, like, to say scaling socialism, it's, like, you our government can stay relatively the same and just have more socialistic policies. And that's enough for me. Like, we're talking about housing. Like, the, you know, Medicare for all, right? Like the idea that everyone is entitled to health care, you know, housing is a human right. Those things are socialist policies and we could incorporate stuff like that into the government that we already have. And so it's, yeah, I think like easily you could just like adapt that stuff. Like we already have socialistic policies in place. What do you think social security is? That's socialism, you know? Right. Medicare itself is socialism. Like these things are social. Like the idea that the good of the many should be paid for by the people who have money to pay for it. But, you know, like, welfare is socialism, and it works, and people are happy to have it. Like, unemployment is a form of socialism. Like, So, yeah, like, like I do think that you can incorporate a more socialistic uh, principles into the government that we already have in America pretty easily. Right. And, and it's funny you mentioned... Um, uh, you mentioned... Um, uh, sorry. Well, I what was the thing you said before unemployment? Um, food stamps or not food stamps, but uh, uh, welfare. 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 Uh, yeah. welfare uh, people will quickly judge people who are on welfare and stuff, right? Um, but what about the people? Right. What about the the multi billion billionaire CEOs that like get all these? They have you know gold. They have golden parachutes and they get all these perks and benefits and they rob people blind. You know their companies rob people blind. Uh, like the banks and stuff during the housing crisis and whatnot, all that right. the huge bailout that they got. How come no one said, hey, why are you giving the CEO of this bank to just rob this blind a bonus when we're like hurting right now? We're going through a fucking recession. You know, no one, no one complained about that. I mean, people do say it, but... Not enough people say but it. But even bigger, people don't talk about <laughs> corporate welfare. Yeah. You know, like people com complain somewhat about stuff like that, but like you said, people will shit on a person for being on welfare, but yeah. people don't really talk about corporate corporate welfare... Which is like exists in a big way right now. Now there's a fight right now with the city of Anaheim and the Disney Corporation because Disneyland is in Anaheim, right? People are kind of Anaheim is synonymous with kowtowing to Disneyland. Disneyland is trying to build a luxury hotel in a certain area near um, Walt Disney World or whatever, and they they're taking all this time, they're all this, they're getting this huge tax break from the city of Anaheim, and then finally they like they've been working on this stuff, and then they've decided. Well, we actually want to do it. It's like a block or two away, basically. And they're like, now we're going to do it over here instead of where we originally said we're going to do it. And so Disney is now saying, well, if you don't give us those tax breaks, then we're just not going to do it. 
<laughs> and so the city, this, so so it's like, where is the? Why does Walt? Why does the fucking Disney Corporation need a handout from the city of Anaheim to give them tax breaks? That's a, it's welfare. It's corporate welfare. It's saying, oh, we're we're going to you know support you because you're saying you don't have the money or the ability to do this. Well, we all know that they fucking do, and they're just choosing not to. That's even worse because people who are on actual welfare need the fucking money because they don't have a job. They don't have any other way of supporting themselves. And people look down on that. This is corporate welfare to the tune of like a corporation saying, well, we would just like to have more money. We all know that they can afford to do it. They can still build it. And the whole thing is kind of scary because the way that they're saying is they're like, well, now, you know, the city of Anaheim is trying to pass an ordinance. It's a, um, a uh, living wage ordinance that would require any kind of service industry job to pay people a minimum wage of $15 an hour. And but one of the contingencies on it is that if you you have to have some kind of you have to be getting some kind of city benefit so disney is saying like well if you aren't going to give us that tax break then we're not going to have to give people the 15 dollars an hour and it's like well you're still getting other benefits from the city we're just taking one thing away but they're trying to play hardball with them with that and it's it's fucking ridiculous because yeah no one looks people don't talk about this like in the mainstream as much or look down on the Disney Corporation, people say, oh, they're smart because they're just trying to make the most money for the stockholders or for the shareholders or, you know, for the people on Wall Street. They're not talking about how fucking shitty that is, like how bad that is for society. Like that's the bigger kind of the bigger thing. And that's it's welfare, basically. And no one bats an eye at corporate welfare. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect example. I, I heard some rumblings about that a while ago. And uh, yeah, it, it, it amazes me that a, a company like that, you know, is demanding so much. But. I mean, I I guess I understand the city of Anaheim's point of view at the same time because I, I'm sure Disney brings in a lot of tourism dollars into the city. But at what point do you cross the line into just you know kowtowing to the corporation, and not in, in, instead of worrying about how this is going to affect you know the, the city as a whole, right? Yeah, and, and the the community. I mean, you're letting this company basically take over your entire town and be the community that you have, like basically. Rather than having any kind of support for the people who live there, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's fascinating stuff, you know. And and this is this is the kind of shit that goes on all the time in this country, especially. Um, but um, I just find it funny how people always uh, they always want to put down people who they who they perceive as beneath them, whether it's homeless people, whether it's um, people on welfare, you know, poor people, whatever, people in poverty. You gotta pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You gotta work hard, and that's how that's how it goes. But that's not how it works for everybody, you know. Not not everybody can just do that. You know what I mean? I mean, you and I we're we're still relatively young. No, I mean what? <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry. No, what were you saying? Go ahead. I was just gonna say that you know people like you and I maybe that works better because we're young, we're able bodied, this and that. But not everybody has that benefit. That's all. You know, it's not it's, right. Yeah, and I mean, look. Uh... Look at uh, look at your situation. I mean, what the fuck is going on? You've been like off and on uh, with work for all this time. And, and why? The place you were just at. Why? I mean, I, we and you actually even talked about this a little bit. But like, why is it a temporary position that they then are just going to rehire with another temporary person? Right. Yeah. Um, well, that's a way to save money because you don't have to give somebody benefits. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. It's bullshit, right? Like, am I wrong? That that's not bullshit. Like. You're taking advantage of the what it's about the community and like that's it's penny like it's a drop in the bucket for them to be able to take advantage of how many people do they do this with? You know what I mean? They have like one or two positions that they keep with a temporary person so they don't have to give them benefits. What's the big difference? Yeah. One extra employee with benefits is going to bank for them? Yeah, I don't know. You I know, mean, and you like unfortunately No, I, that, I, I don't know. I don't know. I I agree with you though. Yeah, and you kind of have been, like, going from place to place, it seems. Like, different weird shit happening, and it's just... Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, it's... it doesn't seem like Colorado's in a bad way. No, like, there's there's not a lot of... The economy's the, pretty good. The economy's great here, though. Unemployment rate is actually a, one of the lowest in the nations, I think, from last I read, but... Um, I don't know. There's not. A, there's not. I work in media primarily, and there's just there's not as many media jobs out here as there is jobs of other industries. Like if I was if if I this is why you know if I could go back in time, right? 
Um, there's so many tech jobs out here. Like, if I was a programmer, if I knew how to code and shit, I could get a job like that. Like, I could get a job. So many, so many companies out here. There are always, whenever I go to apply for a job, that a media related job or any kind of job, I always see in the job listings. There's always some kind of a job related to programming, related to you know tech, basically. So if I was in that, if I had that that skill set, I get a job easily. But I work in media, and those jobs are scarce. If I was in California, it'd be a different story. If I was in LA, oh man, I could get a, a, a editing gig like that because there's a ton of that in LA. There's so much yeah, of that. Yeah, but a lot. Of it's freelance out here, right? It is a lot of freelance. Yeah, that's that's the thing about that, that's the funny thing about LA is that there's a lot of work for for media related type jobs, but most of it is freelance stuff. Not not a lot of people out there hire like a full time staff position. There's just, that just doesn't exist out there. Um, those jobs are hard to come by, uh, and that's why people who are already in the position where like they're in a union and they have like a full time staff job, like they're in it for life because those jobs are they're sacred basically, you know. You're, right, talk, right. you're talking about uh, unions and stuff. I mean, LA is a big union town. There's with the entertainment industry. There's tons of unions out there. Right. But um, but it's it's hard. You know, <clears throat> it's hard to get a, it's hard to get something steady. Like it's uh, they asked someone asked me the other day when I went in for an interview, like, what's your career goal? And my husband, I told him, I was like, honestly, my career goal is to find something steady, <laughs> something that I know right. I'll still be working in a year from it's now. Someone stay there. You know. But enough about my problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're talking about all problems it's i think you know it's good to to talk specifically about yourself you yeah. know like this is big picture stuff we're already breaking down how there's issues but like how do you relate to it you know yeah like specifically you yeah and i don't want to i don't want to be like i don't want to be one of those people that's like oh the problem isn't me i blame the system and stuff like that i don't want to be like that because why not? I, I feel like that's – I would feel like I'm using it as a crutch, and I don't want to use something as a crutch. But, but that's not to say there isn't a problem inherent in, in the way things are right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean the system's fucked up, dude. Like it's not <laughs> – it's not like you're just rolling over and taking it because you're saying that it, the system is fucked up. But I mean the system is fucked up. Like it's wrong. The way that things are done. The, the stock market's not the economy. Our economy has been – completely taken over by the stock market and people care more about you know paying off the shareholders and ceos are taking their kind of taking their bonuses in the form of stock and so then that's the only thing that matters and that's speculative and it's supposed to be the concept of like the future earnings of the company it's not now it needs to be focusing on now it's yeah. like this weird hybrid where most companies most corporations worry insanely about right now in the bottom line but then how it pertains to future earnings and money in the stock market and but they don't want to stop and think about the future when it comes to global warming or what's you know tenable for the future of society and all that. so it's like it's like weird like why is the concept of the future of money is a viable thing to care about but the concept of thinking about the future of the planet is not and it's fucking insane. Like, you know. No, you're right. I mean, I, I joke all the time. Like, our grandkids are going to ask us, uh, you know, what is oxygen? <laughs> what is... I mean, uh, if they're even around. <laughs> if they're even know? around, yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of short-term thinking. Uh, and that I mean, is... People are living longer and longer, but it's fucking weird because it's like, what's the point when the planet's doomed? Right. Like, you know? You're going to keep living to see the end of the world? <laughs> Living longer and longer, and it's just getting it's just getting worse. You know, you, we're we're kind of past the point of no return when it comes to the environment. There really isn't much you can do to to backtrack uh, climate change. But uh, no, and then the stuff with Tesla, with the Tesla and Elon Musk flame up is fucking wild because people were talking like Tesla was gonna, like that was going to save the planet, and now this fucking guy is going off the deep end. And showing his true colors that it was all about – really, it's all about money to him in the end. And yeah. the fact that his he's losing money on his stock has pissed him off to the point where now he's not going to – he's not going to save the planet because he's mad that people don't think that his you know, his fancy electric cars are super cool. Like what the fuck, man? Yeah. You know, I, I always had a weird feeling about Elon Musk and then I saw all the shit that went down with, with him calling that, that guy a pedophile out of nowhere. 
and they're just kind of having a meltdown on social media going after people who disagreed with him and stuff. It's like, yeah, it's like, dude, you're the face of this company. You're the face of three companies. Of multiple te- companies. Well, yeah, yeah multiple co- Tesla, the boring company, and your fucking Hyperloop company. It's like, what are you doing? Like, you need... You need to like calm the fuck down. Oh, you, SpaceX, you didn't even mention SpaceX. SpaceX, yeah. yeah, there you go. Space. You need to, you need to like just get off of social media because if we, if, if we've learned anything in the past ten years, is social media is toxic. It's log off. It's toxic log as off. hell. You know, um, uh, you shouldn't fucking use although it. You, you're one to talk because you live by the edict of never stop posting. <laughs> I used to. I've gotten better, I think, over the years. But then again, I didn't know what kind of an impact social media could possibly have like back when I first got a Facebook and a Twitter and stuff like I I never knew the kind of ramifications of, of of what it could mean you know what I mean but now it's like employers prospective employers will check your Facebook they'll check if you have a Twitter an Instagram whatever people have gotten fired for nothing over nothing over posting stupid shit on Facebook it's like now it's like it's everything it's like it's everything about you because they may not know you as a person physically they may have never met you but their first impression of you isn't meeting you anymore it's what you say online you know and i've learned that the hard way myself i'm not gonna lie like i've i had a when i was in palm springs you know my boss one time brought me in he said i saw what you said on facebook about this person you can't be saying that kind of stuff if you say stuff like that again you know there's gonna be consequences do you understand i'm like yes i do (laughs) <laughs> yes, I absolutely do. And then you went right on to Twitter and started <laughs> posting about that shit. And what's funny is I've I've changed my Twitter name. I don't use my picture. I've like scrubbed any links that lead to even this podcast or anything that could be linked back to me because I'm kind of paranoid that somebody will find that too and 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 then use that to judge me as a person. You know what I mean? Because right. that's the first that's the first step to knowing uh, knowing anything about someone is is their social media. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But that's why. Yeah, and it, but you it know turns what? Out most media companies don't want to hire ironic racists to do video <laughs> editing for them. Well, hold on. But see, the thing is, I'm not. I'm not the CEO of a multi-million dollar corporation. That's why I'm saying, like, if you're Elon Musk, just stay off of social media because you just. It's just gonna. You're gonna. What, look what happened to Tiger Woods. Look what happened to um uh the that dude that politician uh, something Wiener. What was his name? Mark Wiener or something Wiener. The guy that sent a dick pic to a follower of his or whatever on oh, Twitter. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, Richard Wiener. Something like dick that. Wiener. Look what happened to them. Like, those guys, you know, they were they got burned, you know? Or is they, it Richard Spencer? That wasn't Richard Spencer. No, I'm, I think I'm confusing the two. But, yeah. Um, stay on social media. That's, that's, that's the lesson to be learned here, kids. Just uh, if you want to follow your friends and see what they're up to, be be passive in your social media uh, habits. Don't be. Don't be. Or active. like really commit, really commit. Get face tattoos and be a SoundCloud rapper, and just like <laughs> that's the only thing you can do. <laughs> you better hope it works out. You know. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like at this point, what's like fucking little Zan gonna do if his rap career flames out? <laughs> you know, like he's not gonna be able to just get another job. Right. Oh man, I can't even keep up with we keep up anymore with how many rappers and trap artists there are out there. But apparently, there's a lot. Um, yeah, man, it's, <laughs> it, it's fun. It's fun. Like it feels like we talked about it a few times, and it feels like finally, kind of my predictions are starting to come true. That things are coming back around where stuff is a lot more adult oriented. Yeah, content and things are getting a little bit edgier. And I think people are blaming it on Trump, but I think that Trump is a symptom and not really the cause because I had been. You know, you I've, I've been saying this for a while. Like, you know that that's true, that I said that it's going to swing back eventually and people are just fucking sick of all the kitty bullshit. And, like, it's it's happening. I mean, realistically, like, rap is getting, like, fucking mean and scary again. Uh, you know, shows are, like, pushing the envelope about stuff. It's a nice mix, too, because it's, like, a lot of things are still able to be, like, kind of woke and, like, get, like... <laughs> social conscious but then also be like a little bit avant-garde and pushing the limits which is nice because it's like then it doesn't have to hurt everyone like someone's feelings or be like shitty you know yeah i agree with that to a point but you could also make the argument that that things are only only getting that way because of the anti-pc movement right the the, right this idea that you can't say certain words or phrases because they offend a specific group of people, whether that's 
people in the LGBT community or people of a certain race or people of a certain whatever kind of background. Like you can't, you have to be so careful not to offend anybody that people are are pushing back against that. And like you said, Trump is a, is not so much a cause but a symptom because uh, in an age of anti PC culture, quote unquote. It makes sense for somebody like him to come out of the woodwork and be like, "This is what I this is what I feel about this. This is what I have to say. And I don't give a shit who it offends. You know, let, let's uh, let's not give in to these snowflakes as they as as they like to call them or whatever. I mean, what do you think right. about that? I mean, don't you think there's some? Well, I I mean that's <laughs> why I say I like the like dirtbag left kind of edict, which I feel like I like to consider myself at least somewhat part of the dirtbag left, you know, kind of person, which is like. Yeah, like I, there's some things that I think maybe are a little bit too far, but there's also some things that I think haven't been taken far enough. You know, like, like last night when we were at the DSA thing, one of the people introduced themselves and like they they mentioned like you know oh you know their name which I forgot their name and then said like she her and they had like a little bit of stubble, um, and they were like yeah like I think that it's important that you know we remember to normalize when you introduce yourself saying your pronouns. Because I don't want to get misgendered just because I haven't had a couple of days of like not shaving, and w- when they were talking and all that, and like it was talking, I was like, oh, you know, like I didn't have to, but I felt like when I was, if I was going to be prompted to like introduce and and say by pronouns, I was kind of like, I've been thinking about it a little bit, and I was like, I think I feel more comfortable like with a they them pronouns personally, because I don't really relate to like being just like a completely binary male you know? And so I like that. That's like at least somewhat more acceptable right? to say that. Like I don't consider, I'm, I'm not saying that I consider myself trans, but I don't consider myself 100% like male. And I think that it's like normal. Like I kind of like the idea of being more gender neutral personally. And I like the idea that like, that's something that you can say, you know? Right. And so, like, I, I do think that that's, like, not PC culture's gone too far. But there are some things that are a bit much where it's, like, you know, people want to say the F word. And not fuck, but the F gay slur. And they don't mean, like, gay people, you know? <laughs> like, they mean just, like, that something is stupid. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just fucking around. You know I'm kidding about that. I know you're kidding, but, but it, you know what I mean. Like, there's certain things, and like it's hard for me too because I try to not say the R word, but like, but it comes out from time to time still because I also have like the history of, of like using that word when it comes to like automotive stuff and like cars and things like that, or like using that when it comes to like statistics and things where it's like it has a meaning. Like the word has a real meaning other than just people with like mental handicaps or whatever like mental differences so it's like it is tough to then be like well anytime you say it it's a slur because it's like it's kind of not like sometimes it means something else and it doesn't necessarily mean a slur it just means like a prescriptive term that actually means something like it actually has a meaning other than just those people you know or or the idea of those people no definitely that's the thing is like where do you you just have to it's all about context, right? Context matters so much with when it comes to certain words and phrases, I think. Uh but yeah, I Yeah, don't but know. the idea that like PC culture has run amok, it's like has it really though? Like that's another thing too. I like when I hear people complain about trigger warnings, like, oh trigger warnings, everyone's <laughs> so they're too oh, they're everyone gets their feelings hurt too easily. And I'm like to me, trigger warnings feels like it's the opposite of the idea that everyone gets their feelings hurt. It's like a trigger warning is the point is like understanding that you know that people are going to get their feelings hurt by something and just giving them a warning as opposed to in the past, they would just get their feelings hurt and not know or like, or not say it out loud or not be warned, you know, like it's not causing people to be more upset by things. It's just actually acknowledging that people get upset by things. Like it doesn't make any sense that people who get upset about the concept of trigger warnings, it's like, you know, it's, yeah, no, it's I, yelling timber when a tree's falling in the forest. Right. That doesn't make the fucking tree fall down. <laughs> that just lets people know that the tree is falling down. Right. Right. You know. <laughs> you have to you have to pick and choose your battles. You know what I mean? Some things are just not worth fighting over. If someone wants to give a trigger warning, I have no problem with that. You know what I mean? Um, right. But it's funny. We, there was a there was a political ad by this politician that actually won uh, the conservative on the right side of things. And he basically said, like, 
I got a big truck and I'm going to use it to round up illegals and send it back to Mexico. Yep, I just said that. <laughs> I'm like, the oh edgy, my, the edgy racist, the edgy, like, race, like edgy yeah, racist. Yes, like this is this is where we're at now as a society. These politicians are like, it's open game. I can say whatever I want because I'm going against the grain or whatever. It's like, no, dude, like you're just making yourself look like an idiot. But you know what? He won. He won the election to to you know give him credit. But does what does that you know? Do, I don't know. Like, what what does that say about us as a society? Well, that's yeah, where we're at. It's like instead of dog whistle racism, <laughs> it's like fucking fire engine siren racism. It's like they're being out in the open with it, but then under the guise of like it's edgy, and I'm I'm just saying what everyone thinks. And it's like politicians <laughs> are turning into like bad fucking '90s improv comics, you know, like bad like hacky fucking <laughs> comics in front of the the the. Um, brick facade or whatever like except they're not funny that's the thing they're not that's the worst part they're unintentionally yeah, funny but they're not meant to be funny right and then the other then, then the other side of it is that comedians have to be fucking politicians like comedians have to like talk about the social issues and can't just be fun so it's like both are now not funny politicians are trying to be comedians and they're not fucking funny <laughs> and comedians aren't funny because they're trying to be politicians <sighs> and blah, blah. What the fuck? Like, can't we just? Why are we mixing that whole side of things? When, when did people decide that comedians had to be the voice of a reason society? Like <laughs> that? that have, am I crazy that that's not what's happened? I mean, yeah, I, I, I never thought I'd, I'd see a world where Andrew Dice Clay would be the voice of reason. <laughs> right? Exactly. Like, what the? Like, co- comedy is just supposed to be like, in some ways, an escape, and in some way. Like, George Carlin, I get, was, like, political or, like, fucking Bill Hicks are political, but I didn't feel like they were, like, espousing how to fix society. No. They were just talking about issues yeah. and then making light of them. Yeah. And now it's, like, every comedian has to try to fix the world. And it's, like, me and you don't really do comedy anymore, but I always feel like I kind of have my toe in that world, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have friends that, that you know, we've had – you've had friends and we've had guests on our old show that – we're comics, and 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 uh, we were we were in that world at least on the outside looking in, talking to people who were a part of it and stuff. And uh, I don't know, I can't imagine how much, I I can't imagine doing stand up now. Like I I would I was thinking about maybe there's a open mic type thing that you know that's every week in a certain bar here in Denver. But it's like I don't even know what I would what kind of material would I do. Like I, I don't even know what's what's even funny anymore. You know, like I know what's funny to me because. I know what makes me laugh, but I don't know. Right. It, it, it would be tough to come up with a routine because it's like in this day and age and this climate that we're in, what, what's even like, what's kosher, <laughs> you know? Can I, right. can I joke about certain things? Is that kosher or is that going to offend somebody? Or is that going to just like, I got to know, man. Like, I don't want to joke about Trump because that's been, that's been done to death already, you know? Right. And it's really hard to even make, jokes about him because he's already the ultimate parody of himself which is insane but like i feel like half the fucking comedy shows i go to now or shows are like something else comedians doing something else like the other day i went to one and it was like comedians reading stuff from their diaries (laughs) and it's like it's not stand up like kyle canane was there and he just brought like old notes from old jokes from when he was younger and stuff he's like i didn't really keep a diary but i have all this and he just kind of went through his old stuff but it's like it's so it's like distant it's like it's like other it's like a step out of comedy yeah slightly and like ma- like kind of almost making fun of the concept of stand up comedy in this way or like the the other ones that were like actually reading diaries it's like it's like it's like taking something foreign from comedy and just kind of like dipping your toe into the comedy world but it's not comedy it's like it's it is fucking weird I saw another comedian recently and he was doing an opening set and he was like opening for like Mark Marin, which is obviously tough as <laughs> fuck. But like one of his premises, I, I was just like, this is how are you? It's in the climate in the political climate that we're in right now in the world that we live in. How is your fucking joke premise? Like, man, I'm really bad with girls. That's what he said. <laughs> that was his setup for his joke. And I'm like, on top of this, just being super hacky and played out like, it feels like something you shouldn't even talk about right. in like a post me too world where like people are talking about fucking guys just like bothering women and, and like rape and all this. Like you being bad with girls is a fucking terrible premise. No one's like, 
oh, I feel bad for this guy because he's a noise girl. And then he said, then he tells the joke, and then I was talking to Alicia about it afterwards, and I was like, I the premise took me out of it completely. And then we're talking, and she's like, that joke could have not been about being bad with girls. It was just that he was awkward. It didn't have to be that he was hitting on this chick. It could have just been he was trying to have a conversation with her or just trying to talk in general and be like, I'm really awkward. And I try to talk to people and I have such a hard time. I get so in my head. And you could even say, like, it's a girl who's, like, kind of cute and I don't, you know, whatever. But, like, not. it doesn't have to be that you're trying to pick up on her for what the joke was. So it's like, why would you even say that as your premise in the way that the world is now? It doesn't make any sense. Like... Again, like I said, it's like we're beyond the concept of like, for me, I always feel weird. Like, I'm like so happy that I'm married now because I couldn't imagine trying to go up and talk to a woman in this day and age because I just feel so fucking bad (laughs) about the whole idea of it. I'm sorry for bothering you. You know what I mean? Like, how do you even start talking to a, a woman or not even just a woman, but like anyone that you're interested in that way? Like, how do you even think about starting to talk to them? let alone like pickup lines or any of that stuff. So it's like that part of the joke is like already like insane to me that you would even say something like that. So yeah, like (laughs) this is wild. This is fucking wild. You know what? Especially nowadays with incel culture, not, not, I want to know if a culture is the right word, but I'm sure you know what incels are and like that whole thing, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm a proud ball cell. It's, (laughs) It's 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 made everything so they've made it even more toxic because those guys the shit they believe man it's it's insane to me that there are people out there who, I like the redistribution of pussy <laughs> I feel like you could pivot you could pivot that into redistribution of wealth really easily just explain to those guys like hey hey, hey instead of saying that women should just have to give you sex how about if you should just have to give money to people who don't have it. And then when women are, ha- are everyone is on equal playing, then like women will be more open to just fucking whoever. And then you don't have to be like a rich guy who looks good and all this. She might just like be into it just cause it'll be fun. Yeah, no, I know it's, I don't know. It, 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 like you said, I'm glad I'm married now too. I, I don't know that I could go back into the dating scene in this climate. I don't know Never. if I could do it. Even with uh, things like Tinder and Bumble and whatever the hell else is out there, you know what I mean? I, I think it would be hard, regardless of how I look and how I present myself and how awkward or not awkward I am or, or whatever. I don't know. I, I, it's, I, it would be tough for me personally, I think. I can already see it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, I made the joke about being a vol cell, but it's like if I was <laughs> single, I probably legitimately would try to become gym cell. Because I already like, I'm like into this working out life. I would just fucking do that. I yeah. just focus on only just going to the gym all the time. You know, yeah. like that would be my thing. And I, I wouldn't blame you. I mean, there's benefits to that. You know, you're working out, you're losing weight, you're, you're getting the blood flowing. You know, that's good. That's good for your body, Safe good for your mind. Like crippling depression from loneliness. Yeah. Oh man, I. That's the positive. It's amazing to me that something as simple as walking for half an hour can help with people who have depression issues oh where were we uh no that's that's a good point um i i miss the days when we did stand up man i i i look back at those days with a lot of fondness i you know because those are i don't know those, those are just super fun times um and i you know we'll never have that again obviously but uh at least not for a while i think <laughs> but yeah, uh i mean Man, <clears throat> I, uh, things have things have changed so much because that was we were doing that what 2010 2011 so that was what eight years ago seven years ago probably yeah so it's funny how fast things change in culture and society I don't know <laughs> um, True. you know what you, uh, do you still are you still interested in it's always sunny by the way do you, does that still appeal to you at all I haven't watched it in so long it's like I'm I would probably still enjoy it but I just there's so much stuff to watch there's so much stuff to do it's like it's just not on my it's not in my rotation you should watch the you should watch the season 13 trailer I watched that tonight and it's it's not only slightly topical it's fucking hilarious um and it okay. kind of relates to some of the stuff we talked about today believe it or not so do they drop a hard r do they do the, the n word with a hard r uh, no but y- I don't want. I won't spoil it. You you just have to watch it. Okay. Um, okay. Well, you know I only what? watch trailers with hard R's. <laughs> uh, you know what? 
that reminds me, my mom used to work for, it was like something, something foundation for the retarded. And they don't call themselves that anymore, I'm pretty sure. No. But, but in the 90s, that was a word that you just used, and I guess you didn't worry about offending mm. people with it. Uh, so it's, funny it's like you... grids. Grids? Grids. That was a word that you just used. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what that is? I don't, actually. Gay-related immune deficiency. It's what they called AIDS before they realized that people other than just gay guys could get it. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you remember that? You never heard of that? I never heard of that. I did hear about the candy called AIDS that lost a yes, lot of sales. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah, because of AIDS in the 80s. So that was yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, must have been tough for them. <laughs> I was, I was uh, getting gas one time, and I saw that, like, on the, on the gas pump, it tells you, like, you know, we take Visa, MasterCard, and then some kind of a thing called ISIS. And I was like, oh, that's an unfortunate name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we're almost going on an hour here, Tim. Do you want to? Do you want to kind of wrap her up, or what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap it up for the for the fam. Uh, definitely some good discussions tonight. We should definitely have more of these. Uh, yeah, we should. <laughs> but um, I don't have anything to promote. I'm actually I I worked on a 48 hour film festival challenge a few weeks ago. That was fun. Um, I have another. I have something else in the works right now. I think. I think I sent you. I don't know if I sent you the script. I think I have a script that I wrote recently. That's uh, that uh, I'm trying to get off the ground. Uh, I'll send it to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, you've read my stuff before. You can read it again. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, so I have that cooking. You know, I'm trying to get a new job. I'm trying to be a dad and a husband. <laughs> At least a decent. Hu- that's important. A decent husband. And a decent dad and a decent human being, so that's that's where I'm at right now. Uh, what about you? What do you want to promote? Uh, this week in wrestling podcast that I do, um, getting geared up. I mean, I know it's only August, September, but getting geared up for the end of the year. Uh, Psychology is dead stuff. Top fifty wrestlers will be coming out soon. Uh, follow my Twitter at Lucha Undead. Uh, that's about it for me. Follow me at Doctor Spaceman. That's Doctor with a K. You know, 30 Rock, you know, you get that reference, Dr. Uh Follow me on there. Follow me. I'm still at Della Boots on Untapped. So you can ch- still check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's the only place that you're at. Any other Della Boots are not <laughs> licensed, officially licensed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and that's it, Tim. Uh, I don't know if we have three Bs today. Do you want to skip that or do you No, we to... don't. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just say uh, good night and good luck. <laughs> <laughs>